Hi yogis, today we'll be doing a yoga class for stress management and dealing with stress and anxiety in our daily life. Hope you enjoy the practice, let's get started. You can see me, you can hear me. Let's come to our mats. And find a comfortable seat, start with a meditation. It'll be a pretty lengthy meditation. We'll be practicing a visualization in our meditation and some mantra chanting in our mind or out loud, whatever you choose. So make sure you're really comfortable if you wanna sit on the ground, if you wanna sit on a prop like a block or a pillow, if you wanna sit against the wall, if you have any back pain from sitting in a meditation, or if you just wanna lay on the ground, you can do that as well too. As well, as well, as well. <laughs> so take your seat, take any variation that you want, and close the eyes. Gently bringing your awareness to your body, and your mind, and your breath. Whenever you do this, it allows you to really focus on this present moment right here, rather than our worries and our stresses that go on in our mind and in our external world. And us being humans, we're such emotional beings that usually our emotions end up controlling the situations around us in our external world. So meditation is a beautiful method to learn how to go to your internal world, find your stillness, find your present moment, and from there you're able to really calculate how to properly react to the situations around you. Breathing deeply through the nose. Following the whole journey of your breath through your body, from your nose to your pelvic floor, and reverse on the way out. And really try to visualize every step the breath takes within your body, becoming so aware of the movement of your breath. It's, notice how that makes the breath even longer, even deeper, which is what we want out of our breaths. We want to have these deep, calming, energetic breath flows throughout our body rather than short, shallow breaths, which are usually a sign of stress and anxiety. So always come back to your breath, and your body in the present moment. If you need a second to just go inwards, and calm the emotional reactions that your life might bring your way. Also checking your physical body, feeling how your body feels against the ground beneath you, and sensing the space around you, everything that surrounds you in your room. Notice how when you focus on these internal qualities that you feel, it's really hard to let the mind wander. You're so focused on the present moment. And if it is wandering, that's also okay. Just also, just always come back to your breath and to your body. Notice these little things you can do in the moment. And notice how you feel afterwards when you do them. Take one more deep breath here in our awareness practice. And let's take one breath together fully through the mouth just to get a real big feeling of release. <sighs> if it felt good, feel free to do another one if you're okay. Come back to your center and we'll enter a visualization practice. What I'd like you to do is visualize in your mind a place of stillness and comfort. And this can be any place. It can be in your imagination, something you're creating right now in your mind. Or it can come from any memory, a place that felt very still and comfortable to you. Just find that place in your mind for a moment. 
And when you find it, try to tap into your senses there. What do you see? All the things you see. Make a full 360 turn, noticing all the things you see there. How does this make you feel? Do you feel any differences in your energy and your facial muscles? Do you feel happier, calmer? Are there any smells or tastes? Are there any sounds around you? Can you hear anything in this space that you created in your mind? Will be a person or an animal or the nature if it's a nature place. Take one more moment, really being inside of this place you've created. Now I'd like you to take this place and store it somewhere in your mind in any way you want to. A nice way to think about it is to really engulf this place into a snow globe sort of thing and then place it on the shelf in your mind so that you can always go back to it and come back to these feelings that you feel now in this special place. If you wanna put it away on a shelf in any kind of other metaphor, you can. So do that in your mind. Knowing that you can always come back to this place when you need a second to go inwards and feel safe, feel calm, and feel happy. Let's place our hands on our belly and take a couple belly breaths here. Filling up in the belly region as you inhale and bringing the belly back to your center on the exhale. Totally okay, it feels really small, really gentle. No need to really push it or feel like you're doing it right or wrong. Just breathing into the belly region in whatever way it feels comfortable to you. You can do this also without the hands if you're familiar with the belly breathing technique. And sometimes I feel just creating that physical connection to the belly enhances the breath, enhances the benefits of this breath, which is to calm the nervous system and release stress from the body. Let's bring our hands back down to our legs, either in between your legs or on your legs. And before we come out of our meditation, we'll practice a little mantra chanting or affirmations. What you'll do is you'll repeat after me and you can do this out loud if you feel very brave or you can do this in your mind, whatever feels good to you. Take one deep breath here before we begin. I am strong. I am worthy. I am afraid, but my fears do not own me. I am stressed but my stresses and my worries do not control me. As stresses come, they also go. Everything is temporary. I am enough. I can get through anything. Do 
Take a couple more deep breaths here to finish off this meditation. If you feel like repeating any of those mantras again in your mind, you can either right now or throughout the practice or throughout the rest of your day or evening. Notice how you feel after saying these things. And take note of how you feel after saying these things in stressful situations as well. Really preserve them in your mind and use them as a tool in the future. Take one more deep breath before we move into our physical practice. And let's start circling the head. You can keep the eyes closed if you want. Starting to release any tension or stress from the neck region, which is also connected to our shoulders, where we store a lot of our stress. Notice how you feel in these muscles, if they feel tense or if they feel open. Just taking note and being more aware of your body inside of poses. And change direction. Come back to center. Let's inhale the right hand up overhead. Exhale, bring the head, the hand over your head to your left ear and start to tilt your head to the right side. Finding a gentle stretch in the neck. No need to push on the head, just let gravity do the work and your breath. Noticing how you feel on that first breath and on the third breath and the fifth breath. Do you feel the neck kind of opening up? Or if it feels tense the whole time, that's okay too. Let's take one more breath here. And then let's walk our fingers behind our ear so our hand is on the bottom of our skull. And then look down towards the right thigh just to go to the back region of the side neck. deep breaths. And let's slowly come back to center, just noticing any differences on the sides of your neck. And then inhale, the left hand comes up. Exhale, placing it on your right ear and gently letting the head fall to the left side. If your legs are starting to fall asleep, you can also change legs or stay in your seat. And we'll walk the fingers behind the ear, holding onto that bottom part of the skull, and then tilt the head towards the left thigh going into that back region. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back to center. Let's come out of our seat and find a Vajrasana or a Thunderbolt pose. You'll bring your legs together and sit on your heels. Also giving you a gentle ankle stretch. Inhale, the hands come all the way up towards the sky. Exhale, gentle twist to the right, bringing your left hand to the outer right knee. And looking behind you really gently, no need to force the twist today. And if the seat isn't comfortable for you, you can sit on a pillow or a prop, or you can just do this in a regular seat as well. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist to the other side. Inhale. 
Inhale back to center, hands up towards the sky. Exhale, let's interlace our fingers and place our hand behind our head. We'll go into a nice dynamic breath here. That when we inhale, we open our heart forward and lean our head into our hands, finding this nice shoulder stretch and heart opening pose. And then as you exhale, you'll round the back, close the elbows in on your head, and keep curling inwards as much as you can, as if you want your head to get to your legs. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Two more. Last one. And then let's slowly lean forward and find a child's pose. Hands are reaching forward to get that gentle shoulder stretch. If your shoulders are feeling too tight, you can take the hands variation to the back and hold your feet. But if you like this gentle shoulder stretch, then keep the hands forward. Feeling your breath as the belly fills and empties against your legs. Noticing how open your back feels. And how relaxed it feels. Every breath you take, sinking the hips a little bit more onto your heels, sinking your heart a little bit more, your knees. Here, let's gently lift up, not coming up to a full sitting up position, just lifting up so that our head is off the ground. And then let's slide our left hand under our right arm, palm facing up, just to go into this kind of thread the needle variation inside of our child's pose. And then you can drop the head back down. Adding any shoulder stretches whenever we can. To release any tension from those regions. Let's take one more breath here. And then slowly change hands, bringing the left hand forward, sliding the right arm, the right arm under the left arm, and nesting the head back onto the ground. Take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back to center. Then let's come up to a tabletop. And feel really stable here, pressing into your hands, pressing into your legs so that you feel nice and activated, not slouching or sinking, pushing against the ground. Let's just take some wrist circles to warm up our joints. All the joints in your body are pretty much active here. From your hands to your shoulders, your spine, your hips, your knees. There's also a little bit in the ankles and the toes. Whether your feet are down or on your toes, it doesn't really matter. Connecting the movement to a deep breath. Let's change direction. Couple more circles. Notice how you feel 
across your body, from your arms to your back to your legs. And then let's tuck the toes if they're not already tucked, lifting up the hips to find a downward facing dog. Adding any movements you want to warm up the body. Maybe rocking the hips, maybe shaking the head. Take one more breath here in our downward dog, either static or moving. And then walking the feet towards our hands. Finding a forward fold position, we'll interlace our hands behind our back and let the arms fall overhead in this shoulder stretch variation of a forward fold. Feel free to bend the knees if you need to or want to. And just keep letting the hands fall overhead with every breath you take. Also feeling extremely grounded in your feet here. And grounding is a perfect way to counter stress. Because when we're stressed, we're normally really in our heads, really in the sky. So always to go in the opposite direction of what we're feeling is a great way to practice. So lots of grounding, stability. It's perfect. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly bring the hands back down to the ground. And we'll bring the right foot all the way back to find a wide angle fold now. Make sure in your wide fold that your toes are facing inwards. Now, not too much inwards, but just so that your the outer rim of your foot is in, aligned with the outer rim of your mat so that you have correct alignment in your legs. From here, your hands can be placed on the ground and then use your breath to slowly just sink forward. If you want to open the legs wider or shorter, it really, whatever feels best to you. Breathing deeply into your fold, getting that nice hamstring stretch. Our hamstrings also get really tight from too much stress, so it's always nice to get a nice deep hamstring stretch. At this point, we've also been upside down for a couple of breaths, bringing more circulation to our head and our heart, making us feel more calm and at ease as well. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then walk the hands back to the front of the mat and bring the feet together to a forward fold. And let's round up the spine vertebra by vertebra to a standing position. Close the eyes. Take a couple deep breaths, just feeling the circulation flow from your head to your legs again. Feel stable in your stance, like a tall, strong mountain. Stable on your feet, heart open forward, shoulders rolled back. Gently active core. Let's go into a couple rounds of a Hatha salutation just to warm up the circulation in our body and get things moving. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. This will be a really gentle salutation flow, so no need to go really deep into poses or move too quickly. Let's bring the left leg all the way back. And find a low lunge position here. Inhale, look up, open the heart and the shoulders. Let's move back to plank slowly. And for our first round, we'll take a gentle variation, bringing the knees to the floor, sitting on your heels and taking a child's pose. Let's take one deep breath. From here, we'll look forward in between your hands and slide through, keeping the elbows close to the body, inhaling up to cobra. Feel free to take a full cobra 
or any medbull cobra, depending on how your back feels. Tuck the toes, and let's lift the hips up for downward facing dog. Taking one deep breath here. Look forward, bring the left foot all the way through your hands. Drop the right knee, inhale, look up. Bringing the right leg forward, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, hands up towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hands come up, going into the other side. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg comes all the way back. Inhale, low lunge. Back to plank. Exhale, child pose. Dropping the knees, sitting on your heels. Take one deep breath here. Look between your hands. Sliding through slowly, keeping the elbows close to your body. Inhale to Cobra. Tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. And take one deep breath here. Look between your hands. Bring the right foot all the way through. Drop the left knee. Inhale, look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful work. Let's open our hands and find Tadasana again, mountain pose. Just feeling strong in our stance, taking a moment to feel the circulation through our body, maybe a little bit of heat, just from two cycles of Hatha salutations. Before we move back to the ground, we'll take one balance pose, an eagle pose. As I feel it's a really good way to feel nice and compact within yourself, going to that internal world that we talk about here today in our practice, but still kind of activate our energy and our focus, which is what we need in stressful situations. So moving away to your left leg, let's bring the right leg up, knee to chest. Already here, finding a point to focus on, maybe on your wall or your floor, helping you feel more balanced. Feel free to do this with the hand variation or without. Let's do the hands first, because I find that's easier than doing them later. So bring the right hand forward, kind of parallel, or mirroring your bottom leg. And then the left hand on top, and interlace the hands. If this feels okay, Start to bind the leg, but as you do this, make sure that you start sitting in that standing leg, in the left leg, so that it's easier to find the bind. If you don't find the bind, it's okay to do a half bind and just cross the legs, or you can place that top leg on the floor. I'll turn here so you can see the variations. This is with the leg on the floor, this is with a half bind, and a full bind. Whatever variation you choose, Make sure that you're lifting the elbows away from the body, getting that shoulder stretch. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly release, hands to heart center. And come back to standing. One deep breath before we do the other side. Moving the weight to the right leg, bringing the left leg to chest, finding your focal point, your drishti, one-pointed focus. If you want to add the hands, bringing the left hand forward and the right hand on top to interlace. And then bending in that standing leg, interlace the legs as well. Making any variation, like I said before, with the foot on the ground or a half bind, and then lifting the elbows up and sitting into that eagle. Make sure you're really focused. You're still breathing. 
Feeling stable and strong within your eagle pose. One more breath. And slowly bring hands to heart center. And unlace the legs. Beautiful work. Inhale, the hands come up. Let's grab the left wrist with the right hand and lean towards the right just to find a nice side bend here in our standing pose. Feel this juicy stretch you get from pulling that wrist in the shoulder region. One more breath. Inhale, hands come back to center. Exhale, other side, grabbing the right wrist with the left hand, moving towards the left side. You can look to the right, or you could stay looking forward. One more breath. Inhale, come back up, hands to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Beautiful work. Place your hands on the ground, bend the knees if you need to, and let's take two steps back to find downward facing dog. One deep breath here. And then drop the knees to the ground. Yes, we made it back to the floor. Let's go to some thread and needle breath. Inhale, the right hand comes up towards the sky. Exhale, bringing it underneath your body as much as you can without touching the floor. Inhale up, four more. Exhale down, three more. Inhale, exhale, two more. Exhale, last one. And on the exhale, you're going to go all the way and drop the shoulder to the ground. And then dropping the head. Your left hand can stay on the floor for extra support. Or come behind your back, maybe grabbing the right inner thigh. Any variation you want with that left hand is fine. Just make sure your weight is really grounding into that right shoulder. And not so much in your head. Deep breath. Take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back to center. Regular tabletop. Noticing any differences in your shoulders, in your energy. After we heat it up for a moment, we're starting to cool down again. Going on to the other side. Inhale, left hand up. Exhale, coming underneath the body without touching the ground. Inhale up, exhale down, three more, inhale, exhale, two more, last one, and then slowly drop the shoulder onto the ground, and then the head. Right hand can stay on the floor, come behind your back. Palm is facing up. Every breath you take, notice if you're holding any tension anywhere and if you can relax there. If you can drop the weight a little bit more into that shoulder and hold back a little bit less. I always notice in this pose that when I start, I'm kind of like, pushing against the ground. And then with every breath I take, I find myself just kind of rolling and melting a little bit more into it. I hope that you feel the same thing. <laughs> if you don't, it's okay too. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back to center. Tabletop. Again, never seeing any differences in your shoulders. 
And then from here, we'll take a gentle puppy pose before we come to the ground. Walking the hands forward, keeping your hips high above your knees. You're walking the hands with the goal of bringing your chest to the ground. This is a deep shoulder stretch. So this pose takes a lot of flexibility, so if you don't have that flexibility, it's okay to stay on your elbows or even halfway. It's also okay not to be on the chin. You can stay on your forehead. Using any variation you need to feel comfortable within this puppy pose. If you feel comfortable with your chest on the ground and your chin on the ground, then just keep walking with fingers forward so you're getting a really nice deep stretch in that front side of the body. Let's take one more breath here. And then come forward all the way to your belly. Yes. We'll go to one more shoulder love and stretch before we come up to other poses. So on our belly, we're going to open our arms into this T formation and go into broken branch or broken wing. It's a yin pose. If you're aware of it, you can already get into it. If you're not, then follow me step by step. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start leaning your weight towards your right hand and start curling your left body off the ground so that you're entirely weighted into that right shoulder. If you wanna go a little bit deeper, you'll bend into the left leg and maybe into the right leg. <laughs> It's okay if not, it's pretty deep this way. You can do one bent leg or no bent legs, or you can just bend the knees towards your chest and find this kind of comfortable variation. So take any variation that feels good to you. With the left hand, you can keep it on the ground. You can move it towards the right hand so that it's also getting a stretch. Or if you wanna go full throttle, then you'll interlace the fingers and turn them outwards. You can look here if, it, if, it, if, if what I said didn't make sense. And take any variation that suits you. I'm just going to go into the gentle variation. Keeping my left hand on the ground. One leg bent. Moving into that right shoulder. We'll be here for one minute. Just breathe deeply through the nose. Whenever we're in a pose for a couple for more than a couple breaths. We're going deep into those muscles and healing those areas, creating a lot of circulation in these regions as well. And if you feel like your mind is wandering, come back to your breath, come back to your body awareness. Back to your mantras, if any of those mantras felt good to you in our meditation, or maybe your special place. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly roll back to center. Finding that T shape. Just take a moment to notice any differences in your shoulder. You always know if you like any of these poses, you can do them whenever you want for however long you want, also after the class. And from here, we'll roll onto the left arm, peeling off that right body from the ground, maybe bending that right leg or the left leg, maybe keeping the right hand on the ground or meeting it with the left hand and interlacing fingers. Whatever feels good to you. Feeling this beautiful deep stretch in that left shoulder.
Taking deep, thoughtful breaths here. Take one more breath. And slowly come back to center. Ideally, you would want to hold each side for at least three minutes. So that your hand starts going to sleep and tingling. And then when you come out, it'll feel like you just bought a new arm. But really, it'll feel like that. Today, we just did a little short one. From here, let's bring our hands by our chest. And lift up back into child's pose. Maybe noticing any differences in your shoulders here from your first child's pose or anywhere else in your body from the beginning of the practice to now coming towards the end. Let's take one more deep breath here. And slowly come up onto your hands. And let's lift up onto our knees. Yes. If your knees are sensitive, you can double fold your mat or bring a cushion or a blanket or a towel underneath your knees for extra support. We'll go into some camel variations, also amazing for the shoulders, the chest region, heart opening. It can be pretty deep in the back bend region, but I'll give you variations to do depending on what level you feel is best for you today. So make sure your legs are hips distance, not too close, not too far. The legs can also be hips distance or the toes can be more inwards. Whatever feels more stable to you. You can also be on your toes if that feels more stable. It's also helpful because it brings the hand a little bit closer to the foot so it's less of a deep back bend. Inhale, the hands come all the way up to the sky. Exhale, we're going to bring the right hand to the right heel. If you don't want to go as deep, you can place your right hand to your lower back. Palms facing down. And then kind of press into the lower back and just keep lifting as much as you feel comfortable. If it's okay, the right hand is all the way to the heel. Maybe on the toes for less deepening, like I said before. Just take a couple deep breaths here with that left hand reaching towards the sky. Important to note that in camel pose, in all the variations we'll do, you want to feel like your belly is pushing forward, like there's a wall in front of you that you want to push your belly up against, so that you're not leaning too far back. Moving the weight forward to your knees and to your thighs and your belly region. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly, using that top hand, reach up, inhale, both hands come back up to the sky, exhale, hands to heart center. Notice how you feel just after that first variation, preparing for the other side, inhale, the hands come up, exhale, lowering down that left hand to the left heel or to your lower back. Moving the hips forward. You can look down to the ground, to your foot, or up towards your top hand. Whatever feels more comfortable for your neck. Reaching that right hand up towards the sky. Radiating that heart forward. Let's take one more deep breath here. And when you're ready, inhale, shoot that right hand up towards the sky, leading you up to standing or kneeling. Back straight up. Both hands up towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. Take one deep breath before we go into full camel. If you have any back problems or those variations weren't comfortable, hands to the lower back. Or just stay with the hands up towards the sky. That's okay too. If you're with me, inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, lower down the hands to your ankles. You can do this one hand at a time. 
It doesn't matter which one is first. Getting both hands to the heels. You can also do this on the toes like I showed before for less of a deep back bend. Or hands to the lower back. Whatever variation you chose, breathing deeply. Again, pushing the hips forward. Rolling the shoulders back. Enjoying this beautiful heart opening posture. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then bring one hand up towards the sky. Inhale, reach up, both hands come to center. Exhale, hands come to heart, and let's sit on our heels in Vajrasana, just like we started our practice in the Thunderbolt Pose. Just taking a moment for our back to neutralize after those deep back bends. You can place your hands at heart center or on your legs, and just take a couple deep breaths here, being aware of the feelings and the sensations that are arising in your back and your shoulders, in your heart. And then we'll slowly cross the legs underneath our body and come to a gentle seat. Not gentle seat. We'll bring the legs forward. It's not that gentle. <laughs> legs are flexed. Preparing for a forward fold. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, start to lean forward. But try to maintain a really nice straight back as we just did a back bend. So we don't want to be folding too deeply in any direction. Try to maintain a beautiful straight back. Lengthen your spine for as long as you can within this forward fold. You can keep the hands up high or you can drop the hands to the floor, but maintain a nice strong back. Keep rolling the shoulders back. Keep reaching the heart forward. Flexing in the feet. Keep thinking belly to thighs. You might notice that even though this doesn't look like such a deep stretch, like we're not folding all the way forward, there's a lot of work going on here and it's probably a little bit harder than a uh, more passive version. We'll take a couple more deep breaths here. Last breath. And then inhale, come back up. Exhale, lower the hands, and let's bring the right leg towards us for head to knee pose. I always find that folding postures really help me feel more safe because I'm just kind of like tangled up inside of myself, which is a great thing to do when you feel the stresses of the world. So inhale, the hands come up. This time, you don't have to work so actively in the back. Exhale, for, for, pull forward towards that one leg. Up to you. You can keep doing that straight arm, straight back variation, but you can also rest into it. Whatever you feel called to do at this point in the practice, it's perfectly fine with me. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come back up. Bend the right knee towards us, preparing for a gentle seated twist. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, twist towards the right. Feel free to do this as deeply as you want. If you just want to stay here in this gentle opening, or if you want to work to go more deeply, whatever feels good to you. We'll be here for three deep breaths. Last breath. Inhale, hands come back to center. Exhale, let's straighten the right leg and bend the left knee towards us. Flex the right foot. Inhale, hands up towards the sky. Exhale, forward fold, either with active straight back or just Folding over and giving your leg a nice hug. It doesn't matter if the knee is bent or straight, as long as the foot is flexed. Let's take 
One more deep breath. And then inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, bring the left leg towards your chest. Keeping that flex in the right foot. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, twisting towards the left. Right elbow on the outside of your left knee. You can be as gentle as you want or as deep as you want. Couple deep breaths. Inhale, hands come forward. Exhale, lower the hands and let's come to our backs. <sighs> to you. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you'll interlace the fingers underneath the body. Roll the shoulders a little bit more. And then get a little bit higher in your hips and your heart and your belly. You don't have to though. It ever feels good. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Keep pressing into the feet. Make sure the feet aren't getting lazy. One more breath. And then slowly lower the hips back down to the ground. Bringing the knees towards the chest. And letting them fall to the right for a gentle recline twist. And look towards the left. Hands can be open in a T shape or you can bring your right hand your legs to go a little bit deeper into the twist again at whatever level feels good to you. Take one more deep breath. And then slowly using your core, bringing the knees back to center. And then to the left side, looking towards the right, moving really gently. Again, at any level you want to go into this posture, if it's more intense or more gentle.
pillow under your knees or under your head. If you're okay, you'll just lay on the ground, roll the shoulders away from the ears, and tuck the chin slightly towards the chest just to feel some nice length here in the back of your neck. And then coming back to that awareness and how you feel physically with your body on the ground now. Feeling your body become heavier and heavier, moving towards the earth and the ground beneath you. Feeling your breath. Noticing how in the Shavasana, we naturally have a belly breath. The belly always is rising and falling in Shavasana. Whereas in a seated meditation, it's a little bit more difficult. So notice these little things within your practice, within your body, within your energy. And now let's do a little walkthrough of a body scan just to make sure everything is relaxed. And tapping into the sensations you feel physically, emotionally, or mentally within each region. Let's start from the bottom, starting at the toes. Bring your focus to each individual toe, sending them a breath, making sure they're relaxed. And then to the middle of your foot, each of your heels, your ankles, are they relaxed? Maybe you can shake them out for a second and then release a little bit more. Your calf muscles and your shins, your knees, are your knees relaxed and surrendering to the floor and to your shavasana, your thighs and the hips, your glutes, and your lower back. Gently scanning each of these regions Noticing how they feel in this moment. And also know if any of these regions somehow give you a signal that they need some extra attention, then it's okay to stay there and send them some extra healing, love, and breath. From here, thinking about your belly region, bringing your focus to there your ribs, and your chest, and your upper back, and your shoulders melting into the ground, feeling those shoulders feel super heavy, whereas they normally feel so lifted and stressed up by the ears and by the neck. You want to let them feel really heavy and grounded and relaxed your fingers and your hands and the palm of your hands, your forearms and your elbows, your upper arms, moving to your neck, the length of your neck, feeling the breath move through your neck, through your throat, and coming to your head, feeling the back of your head rested against the ground. Noticing all the little muscles on your face and how they're also melting towards the ground. Sometimes we like to hold a little bit of tension in these areas like between the eyebrows or clenching our jaw. So take note of this, making sure that your whole face is relaxed. Finishing off with feeling the crown of your head, the tippy top of your head. Just noticing any sensations you feel there. And then take a couple deep breaths, just feeling the wholeness of your body against the ground. Feeling completely relaxed and at ease. 
Feeling totally in the moment, in the present. Let's take one more deep breath. And then using your hands and your legs, use them to help you come up to a comfortable seat. Keeping the eyes closed, maintain that beautiful Shavasana energy, that corpse pose energy. Feeling the circulation flow from your head to your legs again. Let's take a couple deep breaths here in your seat, in the beautiful posture. Heart forward, shoulders rolled back. And then slowly bring your hands to heart center. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did, please leave a comment down below letting me know how it went for you. Like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye. See you in the next class.